Hey, what's up guys? Happy Thanksgiving. It's Vinier from VD Engineering and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create this. Within MATLAB and Simulink. This tutorial is actually the design of an autopilot in the pitch motion of an airplane. It's a very simple tutorial which will serve as an introduction to Simulink and MATLAB and using it to design a simple control system. This tutorial will cover things like PID, control tuning, um, controller design, as well as some basic Simulink functions, along with some flight simulation stuff after using flight gear. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have an autopilot design background. Basically, you have multiple axes, yaw, pitch, and roll, and we'll be looking at the pitching motion of the airplane. The equations of motion can be seen there. When you sub in values for all the constants, you get numbers, which makes it very easy to represent the system in the matrix form. You have the diagram on the top and simply alpha is the, the angle of attack with respect to the velocity vector. Q is the pitch rate and phi is the body pitch angle. And that's the control variables we're going to use. And we can represent this in state space in Simulink. And this is how we're going to start our control design. So let's jump into Simulink and get started. So when you open Simulink, drag in your state space block and let's put in the values. Put in the matrix values for A, B, C, and D. And the, the important thing to know is that when you type in a matrix into MATLAB, you have to type in the entire row, then put a semicolon and then type in the next row. Because we're showing the matrix in one line. So we need to do this and do the same for B, C, and D. When you're done that, you can put in a state name. So in my case, I have angle of attack pitch angle and pitch rate sorry pitch rate and then pitch angle because it has to follow the sequence of your matrix when you're done this hit apply or hit ok and let's now drag in some more blocks to continue our model let's drag in a d multiplexer or a d mux so what a d mux does is that it breaks up your output into multiple values in this case we have n values right and we need only one which is the pitch angle so you can drag in a DMUX block and then connect it to your state space so the output gets broken up into its respective values. Next you can drag in a terminator. So a terminator block shuts off the outputs if you need it. In this case we're only looking at the last output which is the pitch angle so we can disconnect the first two. So let's connect those to a terminator. Next we can drag in a scope block. A scope is simply output. It lets you see your output in a, on the graph visually. So we need to do this for the pitch angle. Next, we can drag in a step which corresponds to input. So a step function is simply a constant function. It's basically like a constant input. There's many types of inputs in MATLAB from step to sign to like chirp signals and stuff like that. But in this case, we only need a step input. So our simple model is done, but this is an open loop system because we don't have any feedback into the input. So you can Quickly check the matrix and then hit run. So when you hit run, our model has compiled and when you hit scope, you can see your output. In this case, the output is very unstable because it is an open loop system. So the value is simply increasing and not stabilizing at any point, but we need to make it stabilized. So to do this, we have multiple methods. For our trial method, we'll be using just a feedback loop. So to do that, type in gain. Gain is simply takes in the output and multiplies it by some value and then feeds it back into the system. So we need to do this to make sure that our value converges within a specified range of the input. Also drag in a sum block because the sum lets you take addition or subtraction. So when you drag in the sum block, click on it and let's change it to plus and minus since we need to perform a subtractive operation. Connect the sum block on top between your step and your state space. Now let's connect our gain block to the minus sign because we'll be doing a subtraction there. And what that is doing is simply for finding the error. So error is simply the actual angle minus the angle which you input. 
So in this case, we have a matrix there. So we need multiple gain values for each element. So we need one gain value for alpha, q, and phi. And that is why you, you can see me typing in many values in there for gain. And take a note of the last value we use, which is 7.0711, we'll be needing it after. This time, change it to matrix because we have multiple elements and then hit OK. So this is our simple system. So hit run and let's see what it looks like. So it is a lot better now. It is stabilizing at some value. It's no more an open loose system. So we do have improved results, but we can change it. Okay, so we can change our system into a PID system. And let's hit tune to look at our PID values. So when you hit tune, it's going to open this window here and our objective is to minimize the response time of the system. We want an autopilot to respond very quickly to the pilot's input for any error. And that is why we are targeting for a very high response time and settling time as well. So in this case, I'm going to simply move this, the slider to the faster option. And if you want to show your parameters, what MATLAB is telling you, you can actually click on show parameters and MATLAB will tell you the, your control outputs such as your overshoot, rise time, settling time, and so on. The goal is to minimize everything, so we can just drag our slider to the right, and the P, I, and D values will change to adjust for this. So here, it looks pretty good. I have a less than one second rise time, which means that the autopilot responds very quickly to your inputs. So just keep dragging depending on your design criteria, and then when you're happy with what you have there, you can click on update block and MATLAB will auto update everything. It is better than typing in manually because you can avoid any error. So that's gonna be our final output and let's close it. So now our controller is done but we can also fine tune some stuff. So first let's check our output there. It looks pretty stable and it's converging very nicely. But we need to do one thing, which is output of the, the pitch angle. It has to be limited between two values. In airplanes, the, the pitch angle cannot be very high because it can cause issues to the, the actuator of the airplane and cause mechanical damage. So we need to limit the angle between a positive and a negative value. This is accomplished by adding a saturation block. So simply click on PID advanced and then type in your saturation limits. Here it's in rad, so it's about 60 to 70 degrees. We want to keep it between these two values because if the pitch angle goes very high, it can cause, can stall the airplane as well. So our pilots do this all the time. They actually limit the pitch angle to make sure that the plane doesn't stall or get uncontrollable. So when you're happy with these two, you can hit apply and then our final controller is done. So next we can do a simulation of this. I have an entire video on how to connect MATLAB and Simulink to Flight Gear. So please watch that. It's over 15 minutes long and it covers every step in detail. And I show you step by step how you can actually visualize any simulation you want onto Flight Gear. So it's very good video and please watch that if you're interested in doing this. That's how our autopilot will look on a real airplane if you test it. And the autopilot looks pretty good. The plane is pitching up and down there. I'm using a sign function, which makes it very easy to look at how your plane will respond to many inputs, right? So that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.